Two of China's largest renewable energy companies have signed on to develop $6 billion worth of wind and solar energy projects in Australia. In a joint venture with Sydney-based CBD Energy, the companies will form a new ent entity called the AusChina Energy Group. The deal comes as debate still rages over a carbon tax, and the proponents say it has come without government help. Michael Troy reports. <laughs> The deal has been a long time coming and will still require a bit of luck to work. So Chinese lion dancers were called on to clear any remaining bad spirits. The wagging of the tail, a sign that the lion was pleased the job was done. This Oz China joint venture clearly has an ambition to play a leadership role in the development of Australia's clean energy market and make a significant contribution towards a cleaner Australia. With the Sydney Opera House's northern foyer overheated, courtesy of the morning sun, the Chinese company executives were quick to point out that Australia's renewable energy sources were obviously bountiful. This morning we are enjoying much and much sunshine. <laughs> Under the deal, Datang Renewable Power and solar equipment maker Bowden Electric will help develop $3 billion worth of wind and solar power plants in Australia within three years and $6 billion worth over eight years. We have about 22, 23 million people living in this country. We need significant inflows of foreign direct investment to continue to the growth phase that we are in in Australia. Uh, and importantly, a lot of that inbound investment is and will come from China. The Chinese firms will provide equipment and funding, saying they want to share their experience with China having overtaken the United States in building and installing wind generators. Uh, the, this commercial model actually combined all the um, strengths of three companies together, um, so it will be a really good um, advantage for us China. The Chinese also say they are not deterred by the current debate over a carbon tax, or what they describe as any short-term government policy. So the Chinese government has put a lot of importance uh, on the issues of environmental um, protection and awareness. So this also gives um, Chinese renewable energy development a good in, in incentive. CBD Energy says the deal is not dependent on a carbon tax, but they are critical of constantly changing policies that don't encourage a renewable energy sector here. We are building 25-year assets and what we don't want is changing policy every electoral cycle. This industry is too important for that. The first AusChina 100 megawatt wind farm is expected to be built at Taralga in New South Wales. And Jerry McGowan, who you saw in that report, is the MD of CBD Energy, and I spoke to him a short time ago. Jerry McGowan, welcome to the program. Thanks, Diggy. Now, this new joint venture gives you access to funding and equipment, but what does it give your Chinese partners? Because Australia must be quite a small market for them. Well, it gives the, our Chinese partners a window to the rest of the world. They're going to use, um, you know, Australia as the launch pad for um, their international ambitions. Aus China wants a third of the Australian re renewable energy market over the next 10 years. I noticed there was a question mark after that in your in your press release. That's in your words that's 3 billion dollars worth of wind and solar power plants in 3 years and 6 billion over 8. What sort of conditions in Australia are you assuming to achieve this? Well, we're, we're assuming that um, the AusChina joint venture will bring the cost of renewables down to a level where we'll com be competitive with traditional power sources in Australia. But presumably those power sources are currently quite a, a long way apart. I mean, I, I, I notice you quote coal-fired power costs at around $45 per megawatt hours and, and, and wind power now at 95 or 70 to 85 if you, uh, if you include the renewable energy certificates. That, that's a long way apart, isn't it? Well, you know, 75 to 95 isn't a long way apart. And uh, these guys, are, you know, are bringing down the cost of renewables at a dramatic rate. Uh, when you look at solar, it's come down about 40% in the last few years. So we expect the same, exactly the same thing to happen with wind. And uh, we think we're going to be cost competitive in a very short space of time. What about the policy changes that have happened in Australia over the last few months? Well, it depends on which ones you're talking about. 
ticky, but I mean, I think we've had 22 policy changes over the last six months in Australia. And, um, you know, it, it's a big disincentive to renewables in this country. Um, you, but, but, you know, if you're talking about carbon taxes and things like that, I'm not sure that I'm a great fan of a carbon tax. Um, I'm not sure that we want to um, add additional impost um, to industry generally and consumers generally. Um, but what I do want is, um, you know, very clear targets from the government, and then I want government to get out of the way and let the industry um, deliver the outcome that they desire. That's very interesting. I would have expected you to be broadly supportive of a carbon tax. Well, it's a tax and someone's got to eventually pay it. And uh, I'm not certain that um, the, renewable in the renewable industry um, should be seeking su such a tax. I think what we want is very clear policy, very clear direction. We are making 25-year um, commitments in terms of investment. And we want just clarity, and then we want government to get out of the way and let industry deliver. Do you think China specifically um, and your Chinese partners see this issue as, a, as an area of sovereign risk? Well, absolutely they do, but um, Chinese think long, and uh, at CBD we think long. So, you know, we're, we're looking at uh, not one or two year parameters, we're looking at, you know, 10, 20, and 30 year parameters. <laughs> How much, uh, moving to, to jobs and manufacturing, how much manufacturing for these projects will need to be done on the ground here in Australia and how much will be done in China? Well, initially, not a lot. And Australian governments generally have been um, you know, very lax in ensuring that initiatives that they set in place create jobs in Australia. However, what we are doing um, with our partners is that we will establish a manufacturing of PV base in Australia and we're looking to, to um, manufacture certain components of our, um, our wind business, you know, domestically. Does it worry you that the ongoing talk about skill shortage and what that will do for the, for the cost, wages input costs? Well, once again, I think it's an impost on industry to ensure that we do incentivise TAFE colleges and uh, educational institutions to, you know, incentivise students in the directions that we need them to be in to create a renewable business in Australia. Mm. Your renewable energy that you produce, of course, won't be baseload power. How does that affect the price you get? Well, over time, it could be baseload power. Um, you know, who says that renewable can't deliver baseload power? And um, well, I know, do at the moment because I haven't seen any demonstration that that that, that can happen. Well, you know, you, you, what, what you're seeing in China is that they're going to build 150,000 megawatts of wind um, over you know, the, the, the next eight years. So Australia is a 50,000 megawatt market. So I'm not saying that we can't build baseload power, but are we going to replace coal and gas in the immediate future? The answer is no. But you know, I, I think over time um, that we can build our capacity quite dramatically. I mean, we're working on a project at the moment with Hydro Tasmania on King Island to lift their renewable penetration to about 85% of their base capacity. I, no I noticed that some of your new projects may include energy storage opportunities. That presumably is a, a, is a nirvana in the clean energy area, isn't it? It, it is, and, you know, it, d technology is going to move very rapidly in renewable energy over the next 10 years. Um, it's no different to, you know, other technology industries. And finally, CBD Energy, I think, has about a 24% stake in this new joint venture. How much influence does that give you over the strategy? Well, they've made me the interim CEO. Um, we are the ones that have pulled all the partners together. We are bringing the initiatives to the joint venture. I think we have a big influence over what we do over time. Jerry McGowan, I thank you very much for joining us. Big day for CBD Energy. Thanks, Tiki.